In this video, I'm going to show you how to uh, create a very basic wireframe inside of Pixlr. Um, Pixlr is found at pixlr.com and we're going to be using the Pixlr editor, which is similar to Adobe Photoshop. It's free. So, we're going to create a new image and we'll give it a width. Let's just make it a 1080 wide and 1200 in height um, and it gives us a nice blank canvas for us to work with. So the easiest way to create a wireframe is to use the shapes tool. Uh, the shapes tool or the drawing tool uh, as it's known in Pixlr can do lots of different things uh, but for uh, doing a wireframe for a website usually uh, we're just drawing a bunch of boxes on the screen so we can either use the rectangular rectangle tool or the rounded rectangle tool that's the easiest way to do it first thing I want to do is create a new layer and we'll label this first one uh, the first thing I'm going to do is the header on the page so we'll label it header and uh, we're going to I'm going to use the rounded rectangle tool so let's bring the border radius so down to about 10, that'll do. Just need to make sure that I change the fill color to white. When I change the tool, the fill color changed again. When I changed the tool, the border size also changed. So I'll put that back up to five or so. Now I'll draw my rectangle. There we go. So I've got our header. I'm going to create another new layer. The reason why I'm doing it all on separate layers is because it makes it much easier later on to edit the different components of my wireframe. So this one is going to be my navigation. And we'll draw that just underneath our header. And it's going to look something like that. Uh, and then we're going to have our main content. So another new layer. Main content. We'll draw that in underneath. And then we might, for example, have a sidebar. Draw that one in too. Again, we're just being really rough with this. Um, and last of all, we'll draw in a footer. All right. So I've got my basic website layout. You may choose a different design. Um, you know, it's up to you what your design is. But I've got my basic layout on the page. Now I just essentially need to label it. So I'll just get the type tool. I believe that's what Pixlr calls it. Yep, the type tool. And we can just type what the different parts are. So we might have a header, banner here. It's okay. I'll select the move tool to get it in the place where I want. You notice when we do text, it creates its own layer by default, and the name of the layer is whatever the text is on that layer. Uh, and then we're going to do navigation. I'll move that kind of in the center again. And in fact, I might move it up slightly. You'll see why in a second. Then we have our main content. Let's move that to the middle. And then we've got our sidebar. And last of all, we've got that into the middle. 
okay. So now that I've got each of these sections labeled, it's quite clear the layout of my uh, my website. And what I'm going to do is uh, add some extra labels to say what the dimensions are. So for example, I'm going to reduce the size. Let's maybe down to, I don't know, 14, that'll do. And we'll say the header banner is 960 pixels by 300 pixels. And it's nice and obvious now what the dimensions are going to be for our header banner. Our navigation will be 960 pixels by um, 150 pixels. Actually, that's pretty huge. So 960 by 50 pixels. So obviously not everything's in proportion, uh, but that's okay. And our main content, we might make that 600 pixels and the the height of the uh, main content is going to vary depending on what what is in there so we're not going to specify a height on that uh, it does not stay constant whereas the navigation header banner do stay constant from page to page and our sidebar Well, first of all, what we'll do is we'll put in, say, a 20 pixel margin. So that's a 20 pixel margin there. And we might have, uh, we can copy that by just dragging that down to the new layer and move up the copy to the top. 20 pixel margin there. We'll do another copy and move that one down to here. So we've got nice 20 pixel margins and then we can create another one and move that down the bottom. And another one again another margin down here. Alright, so the there's only two more things we need to do. I'm going to do another margin here. So, uh, for example, we might have a 10 pixel margin between content and sidebar. So I'll put that there, and last of all, we need to define how wide our sidebar is. So these top ones are 960, um, and we've done 600 plus another 10 for uh, the margin in between these. So that leaves us 350 pixels for the width of the sidebar. All right, so there you have it. We've labeled everything. It's really obvious, all the dimensions that we're gonna be using for the different elements on our page, what they are. Um, oh, sorry, we haven't labeled our footer. So our footer uh, is gonna be 960 pixels by, let's make this one 150 pixels. All right, now we've labeled everything. It's very obvious, uh, all the margins that we've got, the dimensions for all of our different elements on the page. Uh, it's really, really clear uh, how we're gonna lay things out on a page. So when we start to code things up, it's gonna be very obvious how we're going to lay it out and when we 
do our CSS, how we're going to construct the dimensions of all the different sections on our page. So once you've finished, make sure that you save this in appropriate format. Uh, there's no transparency on this one, so uh, we can go to save, and because there's no transparency, we can save as a JPEG. Because the wireframe, we'll just do a maximum quality. It doesn't matter too much. But before you even save it as a JPEG, make sure you save it as a PXD file, so a layered pixel image. That means that you'll be able to come back later and edit all the layers and any effects or anything like that. Uh, it's the advantage. It's like saving it as a Photoshop file in Photoshop. So save it as a, a PXD file, uh, give it an appropriate name. So site wireframe, for example. Uh, although my students in their assignments, they might have a specific name they need to use, but uh, so uh, just label it appropriately, save the PXD, and then save it as a JPEG or a PNG if there's transparency in it. Um, but for in this case, we're going to save it as a JPEG after we save the PXD. Hope that makes sense. I hope you find this useful. And uh, check out uh, some of the other videos that I've got on Pixlr to see some of the cool stuff you can do inside of Pixlr. Thanks very much.